good. <laughs> get it got a good, yes. Yeah, what yeah, was that, Danny Kay? Get it got a good. Hey, no everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, I have a fabulous husband and wife duo today on the show. Together, they lost 120 pounds get this, eating potatoes, and they started a supper club, a vegan supper club, or a plant-based supper club, that is. Please welcome to the show, Wendy and Chuck. How are you guys doing? Mm. Hi. Great. Yeah, great. it's so nice to, be to, here. nice to meet you. You know, I, I heard about you from my friend, Steve Middleman. Uh, I guess he's in your group, and he said you were Absolutely. fabulous. And, you know, everybody not only loves a good success story in terms of weight loss, it, it's not, not so much the weight you lost, but how you did it. I think that's going to interest people because there's still a belief out there that potatoes are bad, they're fattening. And we all know that for those of us that eat this way, it's the perfect food. Mm. Yes, it is. I love potatoes. So how did it start? Uh, car accident for me. <laughs> yeah, heart before, well, actually, before that, um, I found out by accident. I ran it. I had been overweight all my life, and um, I just I had given up. I didn't think. I'd been to all the diets, and I thought, man, I'm never going to get this weight off. So, you know, might as well just enjoy life because it was it, dieting is freaking hard. And so uh, there I was, and I'd been running a vegan club here in uh, like a Facebook group here in, in Charleston. Because I was interested in vegan eating because, um, you know, I found out what it is to eat meat <laughs> and I don't want to participate in that anymore. So anyway, a, a couple of friends and I were running this first, the first vegan uh, group here in Charleston. It was a potluck group because we thought maybe we could get people interested in um, helping animals by not eating them and let's, let's enjoy the food. So we were doing that. And at one of these uh, meetings, one of these potlucks, one of the new young members came in and told me he'd lost 70 pounds. And I said, you're kidding me. And he said, no, no, I lost 70 pounds. I said, well, how'd you do it? Because that's, you always ask, how'd you lose, lose weight? And I was expecting some diet, fad diet. And sure enough, he gave me a fad diet. He said, I ate potatoes. <laughs> I said, potatoes? You're kidding me. Yeah. And I thought, you know, here's another crack pot. And I ran home though. I thought, because, you know, I could probably do potatoes. That sounds pretty good. Um, comparatively to all the other 50 million diets I've ever had in my, I'm 66. So I've been doing this since I was 16. I've been dieting. 50 <laughs> years. Wow. 50 years of yeah. dieting. 50 years of, you know, oh gosh, Stanley Burroughs lemonade fast and um, coleslaw soup and just I'm just everything. Atkins. I did Atkins for a year and a half, which is called keto now. I did keto. Anyway, so I ran home. And I started looking up this McDougal guy and potatoes. And I thought, hmm, that doesn't sound really too bad. It sounds reasonable. I, I could do that. And I had read about um, the Crocs uh, and their potato reset. And that sounded drastic enough for me that I would try it. Because I knew, I knew, I don't, I'm not a person who can deal with incremental, tiny little changes here and there. I want to lose some weight and I want to do it now. And I want to see something. So the, I thought the reset, that sounds punishing enough. I can do that. Eat mm -hmm. potatoes only for two weeks. I, I can probably manage that. So that's what I did. And that's how I started. And after, uh, uh, after the two weeks was up, I went to a McDougal style diet of mostly starches. And I started reading everything I could find. And your show was one of those first things I found. And I watched, I mean, you know, tons of your shows and all the people. And it was such a good channel to f figure out how to, we, you know, how to kind of the rabbit paths to pick. Like, oh, I like this speaker. Like the Doug, wow, I love that one. I love him. I love him absolutely. So anyway, I found all this good stuff through your show and started reading voraciously. And um, then I was losing weight all this while as I was eating this way, very strictly. And... <laughs> The problem is that everybody thought I was a nut. Even this guy here, he, he didn't think I was a nut. He was kind enough to help me, but he didn't want to eat like what I was doing. He wanted to keep like everybody, you know, he wants to eat his own way. He's not motivated particularly. And so I lost a bunch of weight all by myself and people throwing rocks, eh, potatoes, that's crazy. Well, I lost the weight. And then we came to a place where um, I could not really convince him to come along because you can't, you have to be motivated. 
And I prayed that God would give him, <laughs> this is terrible. I prayed that God would give him an accident or a, a health crisis, not an accident, what? a health crisis <laughs> that he could live through. I said, please let him live. Give him something, but let him live. I did suspect that uh, at the time that I didn't see too many uh, obese 80 year olds was concerning to me. Yeah. And so, so I made this prayer and three months later, we flipped our convertible upside down into a creek bed and we were pinned under 3000 pounds of metal. <laughs> Could not move. Oh, awesome. And it was dark and, and it was getting ready to be sun. You know, the sun was going to go down and it was, a you know, a rarely used dirt road and so that's a long story and i share that in my group but um because i like to tell this one but we got out of that amazingly um we heard some gravel gravel above on the road and we yelled out and a guy came and he was able to cut chuck's uh seat belt and call um call emergency and ambulances came and we were able to slither out through a tiny tiny little crack that Chuck luckily wasn't too big to get out of. He slithered through there and I went through that hole and our dog lived too. That's the other thing. Don't and uh, he, he had a heart attack on the way to the hospital after that. Yeah, during the old deal, the yeah. Stint, got a stint put in. Yeah, and that's when after that, I didn't realize that was an answer to prayer, oddly. But after that, um, I said, can I throw away your peanut butter? now and your granola mm. we were eat re vegan we were fat vegan we were eating all the vegan food but we were eating impossible burgers and i love the silk vanilla ice cream and we had all the junk of vegan cheese all that stuff and he was eating a lot of granola bars and a lot of peanut butters and peanuts and, and, and both of us were drinking and so yeah. at that point he was motivated enough to to go ahead and do it and he started yeah. eating air fried potatoes every day for lunch and just stay out of the hospitals yes yeah. i don't want to be in the hospital I'll do it i don't blame you do you guys have any before and after photos we can show oh yeah yes i had sent some to you but okay i'll see if i can while you're talking i see if i can pull it up i do yeah I it's in the email sounds, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll pull them up while you're talking that accident sounds okay. terribly frightening it was yeah you know, it's life-changing and so you know, Chuck, I'd like to hear what you felt like when um, when the accident happened and I asked you to throw away the peanut butter because I don't get to hear well, you talk about it. I don't know. I just decided this is the time. And and like I say, you don't see many obese 80-year-olds and, and we just have to knuckle in and do the right thing. In fact, it was fun uh, for the next nine months or so being on the diet, just watching the weight. I, I stuck a, a chart on the wall and took my weight every day, just watching it go down from 240, 260 area, down, down, down to you know, around 185. And that that made it all worthwhile. Just slow, steady progress for the better part of a year. Mm -hmm. And we're staying there. I'm staying around 200. And, and we were very so, strict about no oil because no oil. the thing was, he'd had that stent in there. Oh, here's the thing we I haven't been able to say. when I went in, we, they took us off in different ambulances. And when I went to the hospital uh, where he was, I, I went and got stitches in the hand. And then I got a call to friend and she drove me over to the other hospital where he was. And um, as I was going in the hospital, they said, your husband is recovering from his stent. And I said, what? Oh my You're God. kidding me. Because the thing is, I have always had high blood pressure since I was 30. And I had worse cholesterol, worse high, always work high high blood pressure his blood pressure was fine his cholesterol was pretty good you know his numbers were okay they weren't great or anything but they were okay mine were worse and since i started eating this way my cholesterol dropped like a rock and my blood pressure. And my blood pressure dropped i was able to get off blood pressure pills at the time just like three days later after the potato reset and uh, uh the doctor looked at my ldl and her jaw was hanging she said what have you done this is the biggest drop I've ever seen um, that wasn't due to medicine. And I started telling them about potatoes. You know how they do, they do their eyes glaze. Their over eyes roll, oh, well, right? Good. You, yeah. you keep doing what works for you. <laughs> and so, but anyway, um, so I was shocked that he had a heart attack. And they said, while we were in there, 
we found out that his widow maker is 60 to 70% blocked and we can't fix it. Oh my sure. God. So with all that, and I had a year under my belt of reading Dr. Esselstyn and Ornish and I read it, you know, um, later made him mm -hmm. read the China study with yeah. me. Um, we read, read all this stuff and I thought we cannot have oil. And we started doing um, Esselstyn Green six times a day, little handful every you know yeah. few minutes. And instead of nitroglycerin, that <laughs> yeah, we did all that. We were strict, and then because we were strict, both of us had results. I, mm -hmm. I don't lose weight quickly, so mine were only like you know at first maybe four pounds a month, uh, you know, or or a week at first at four pounds a week, but then it slowed down to two, and then to one a week, mm -hmm. one pound a week. And then like a half a pound a month kind of thing. So um, what was the time period for you both to lose this 120 pounds total? It was August, late August 2020s when we had the accidents. So it was all the rest of that year in 2021. For him. Now, that? for me, the first year before the accident, that was when I was doing this diet by myself mm -hmm. and trying to learn how to navigate social, all mm -hmm. the social problems with it. But I was doing that and I lost 44 pounds the first year mm -hmm. and then the remaining six in the following year gradually came off as I learned how to live this way. Yeah. When you did the potato reset for two weeks, how much weight did you lose during that time? And were you just eating the same type of potato over and over? Any condiments and just plain potatoes, no vegetables, nothing else? Um, during that first two week re reset, I ate only potatoes and a little bit of little bit of condiments like salt. Awesome. I made awesome sauce, which was from one of your shows, but it wasn't your recipe. But I saw about the balsamic vinegar, you know, you're uh, talking about that you promote a lot here. Mm -hmm. And the um, I put mustard and hot sauce in that balsamic vinegar and I'd mix it all up and I put a little dribble, a little of that on there. But that's all I ate was just plain potatoes. I didn't do all this. There's all kinds of resets where pretty soon is it's not even achieving the point. The point is to have monotony with food and to understand how to live outside your craving for food and do things. You know, you, when you're hungry and wanting to eat, you may only eat a potato. And sometimes you just don't want a potato. You want to eat, but you don't want a potato. And that's how you know you're not hungry. You're eating for entertainment. And so mm -hmm. the reset is, is since you can't have a potato and you really don't want a potato, you have to go out and do something or think something or read a book or or whatever, but you have to get your mind away from um, the thinking of food. Yeah, so, trip. yeah, and that first week you asked me how much I lost, I would say I lost maybe, wasn't impressive, probably seven, eight pounds. You know. but, you, but did it stop like cravings for junk food, for example? Yeah, yes, and that was the point. And I understood mm -hmm. that. And that's why I did it because the Crocs were t explaining. They, I watched their, they did it for two weeks, I think. And they, they did videos about how they felt each day. And so I knew that I was going to feel cranky and, and cruddy and that I wouldn't like it. And I'm going to be, you know, get out of my way this week because <laughs> I won't be, I won't be a B-I-T-C-H. <laughs> you know? If you don't mind, Wendy, I have the pictures you sent. So I'm going to share my screen and sure. maybe you can tell us what uh what everything is let me pull them up here okay Let's see can you see this can you guys see this picture uh -huh. yes that's thumbnail that's yeah. a thumbnail that's chuck yeah okay so so that that's a before and after about oh wow you were you were a much bigger chuck oh yes yeah now yes, my yes. there's one of me of the stages there's four little slender views of me which show the beginning to the having lost everything yeah well we'll get to them one at a time okay chuck this is a big difference okay i'm just doing them in the order you sent okay okay look at that yeah chuck that's a lot of weight uh -huh. yep good job well that must be you guys now nice and trim I, I there's thumbnails so I can't really see them very well that's our yeah. wedding we we got remarried not remarried recommitted or whatever it's called is that better when I do it like this can you see it full screen now no not yet all we can see are little tiny thumbnails which are about a uh, three Dude, quarters of an I'm inch. wondering if the audience can see it because I'm seeing it full screen 
because uh, mm. I, I can't get to the um the other screen if I'm if I'm doing this screen. Okay. I can. What I see is a folder of thumbnails and your mouse arrow pointing to each one. So you don't see this when I maximize it. This is all the before and afters with you. No, I don't. Maybe there's some kind of Zoom thing I don't know about. Let me just click let me, this. Let me look on YouTube because I, I can't get to the chat and I can't like I have I can only have one screen open at a time. So let me go look at my YouTube channel. Okay. And I can see what the other people are seeing. I can't. Okay. Whoops. Oh, you're right. I'm seeing just a bunch of thumbnails. That's mm -hmm. not good. I don't know how to maximize these. All right, hold on. Let me try one other way because they're they're fabulous, fabulous pictures. So let me let me go stop share. We're gonna, I have one more way to try it. And then if that doesn't share work, the, share the right screen. Okay. Does it work better if I do it like this? Does it work better if I do it like this? Can you see it bigger? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I can see what okay. you're. All right. So at. that that's that looks like you in the hospital receiving an edible arrangement. Correct. Yes. Yep. Banged up. Wow. Okay. And this Perfect. is your before and after. This is 139 pounds, 193 to 139. Yes. Perfect. Are we actually? Are we mm -hmm. doing? Oh, yeah. Are we on yeah, the air? Are we? That's a good yeah, one. no, you're live. And this is you guys live? in okay. the same outfit um, just uh, yes. two years later, pretty much the same outfit. And that one, I had lost weight on that one. Um, the first one in 2012, uh, when we were married, I had lost weight to get down to that. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, and I had this, I had put away this little dress. I'd hoped to get, do Stanley Burroughs lemonade cleanse and get thin enough to get in this one on the right, but I never did. I just gained weight because wow. I wasn't, I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to live really. And yeah. so this on the right is the dress. I was able to get into the dress after I did the reset and I did learned how to eat mm. this way. That's uh, you know, I've gained a little bit of it back because I like to eat heavy. You know, we eat a potluck food, which has bread in it and one stuff. Yeah. Once well. And I make great stuff, which is hard not to eat. So. It is hard. Uh, that's just, it's, okay. This, these are some side views to show that you have trimmed down quite a bit. Well, the point of this collection here, see, I run a group, W Vegan on Facebook, and I'm always trying to share this stuff to encourage people to do it because people just don't want to eat this way. And they get mad, you know, they get mad about it. But anyway, I, so I you know, share all this. And the point of this one is to show how long I've struggled. This one's 2009. Then we got like, what, four years later, 2013, I'm still fat. And, and after six years after that, 2019, I'm still fat. And in between there, I would do some fad diet and lose 30 pounds. And I could never get down thin, but ever, but I could lose, you know, 20, 30 pounds and be a little better. And it would always come back, always. And so, and then here at 143 pounds, I've maintained that. I'm about 150 now, but I've maintained a uh, size eight pants since 2020. That's amazing. Congratulations. Which is, you know, I'll probably never be thin. I would love to be thin, but you know, I'm not going to worry about it. As long yeah. as I can wear size eight pants and I feel pretty good and I like what we eat, that's good enough. That's, that's as good, good as enough. I need to get. Kudos. So there's there's Chuck's yeah. face. Um, this is from Dr. Esselstyn's book, but I'm guessing yours kind of probably looks something like that as well. Yes, because his is 60 to 75 percent block, 70 percent block right now. You know, wow. we're, what we're trying to do is keep that from getting blocked further mm -hmm. and keep those little ancillary veins going around that thing open. And those are small. You know, it seems to me like they'd be easy to clog if you eat fat. Mm -hmm. Wow, you got you got a little arm muscle going there. No, that's about my flags. My oh, flags you call those flags? We call we used to call those Hadassah arms that when uh when you yeah. wait, it, it kept going, yeah. And I had a lot of naysayers ask me, aren't you worried about all that flab when you lose weight? And I said, the heck no, man. These are my flags, these are my flags of victory. <laughs> Absolutely. Wear it proud, wear it proud. There's your before and after again. And that's now our group. Your Debbie nice. Vegan is our group on Facebook where I can say all this stuff and be enthusiastic and share all the neat articles. Like if I if I watch a Dr. Lau and he says something helpful to me that day, I'll put it on the group in W Vegan. I'll say, wow, this one was really great. And he said, blah, blah, blah. 
And the same thing for any of these wonderful people that you interview all the time. So I try, I share a lot of your videos and a lot of, uh, lots of things that I find because I read something just about every day. That's how excited I am about this. Nice. Okay, we got a few more photos, guys. Here we go. Look at that. That's a really, oh my God, what a difference. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, I like clothing. Mm -hmm. I'm an artist and I like to do makeup because I, I can paint, you know, and I like clothing and uh, I like to play with the way the colors go together and uh, the shapes and all that. And you just can't dress like that when you're overweight, when you're obese, like I was. It's yeah. nothing to wear. It looks good. Yep, looks great now. There's two nice, mm -hmm. nice one. Yeah, that's a great one. All the different years, all the different weights. Oh boy, that's not a good photo. <laughs> it was an awful day. Yeah. Yes, I'm it was. So glad you and the pup got out. And he was chained to the car too because it was open top, but I had a really long chain. And oh. so he flipped out the window. Thank God. Oh my that God. could have been so bad in so many ways. I just honestly, it was a miracle. I'm just oh. so grateful. Yeah, that, that really is life changing. Look at you guys now. Mm -hmm. W vegan. That's our group. Uh, you love being out of fat jail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great before and after. Yeah, that's a, I just saw him speak at Plantrition. He's, I'm, I'm assuming you read that wonderful book. Um, I have skimmed it. Yeah. Esselstyn's the one that really got my attention. Plantrition, yeah. man, I'm so jealous. I would love to. Well, go, that. go come, go next year. It's in September, September 20th in Mar at the Marriott in Anaheim. You guys can make a trip and go to Disneyland. Okay. Look at that. So, God, you guys must just. Oops, this is. We're going to play this at the end. You guys just okay. must feel so great. Oh yes, definitely feel better. Yeah, I'm able to get around. I enjoy. You know, being physical and being able to move and yeah, you know, not struggle so much. Oh gosh, it's, my it's worth it in so many ways. My arthritis is something I like to be sure to brag about whenever possible. I had crippling arthritis, which just came on suddenly. I'm uh, 66, and so at 62, I had an ache in my dominant right shoulder, and um, I couldn't figure out what it was. I thought it was a torn rotor cuff. Went to the doctor. She does X-ray. She says you have arthritis. I couldn't believe it. I'm not supposed to have arthritis. People in our family don't have arthritis. What is this? But that's what can you do? You got arthritis. And my, then a little bit later, my knee started to hurt so bad. I could only walk a quarter mile on it without having to sit down in pain, panting with the pain of it. The ache was just horrible. A whole, like your whole, uh, an area going down the shin aching. And, um, uh, I was eating this way and people immediately want to blame the, your food. That's the first thing they say. Oh, is that weird food you're eating? Mm -hmm. No, I said, I'm, I'm just going to keep doing this and I'm going to tighten up. I'm going to quit the, I was having a Starbucks -y kind of coffee once a week. I quit that, eliminated coffee, really watched my sugar, made sure I didn't have any sugar and just buckled down a little tighter and it went away in a month. And my knee is still good to this day and my mm -hmm. shoulder is good and I can sit cross-legged on the floor. My hip doesn't hurt. Because I'm not eating inflammatory food. And you can eat inflammatory food when you're vegan. I mean, I got arthritis coming on as a vegan, eating all that heavy, fatty stuff, processed food. So anyway, that's a... Uh, Absolutely. So if there's a few exciting. comments. Uh, Dixie says it's important that we show our before photos. And Mona says it's great that you were able to document your journey like that. Because a lot of people don't like to take pictures of themselves when they're heavy, you know? Yeah. Oh, I made myself. I made myself and it was one of the worst, hardest thing. It was the, you know, starting this diet is the hardest thing ever. It's the first step. And that first step included for me the before pictures. And when I looked at that, I was disgusted with myself and I just wanted to quit right then. I thought I can never move this mountain. Never. The little old lady curl up. And oh yeah. He, there's a quote I told to him right before I started eating this way in 2019, that winter, I sat on the and I was 193 pounds and I just felt, I felt like I had blown, been blown up like a balloon, you know, like you got too many winter clothes on, you can't reach things well, you, your joints don't move well, you're just all bundled up. And I told, I told Chuck, I felt like a little old lady ball curling up on myself. 
You know, I could just imagine myself curling up like a pill bug into a little ball and not being able to move or, or do things. So um, that's when I started this diet at first, before I met the guy who'd lost the weight on potatoes, I thought I can, maybe I can just move 10 or 20 pounds. I'll just quit eating the ice cream at night and I'll quit having breakfast. And that's what I did. And I was losing a little bit of weight just from, by cutting those things out. And that's when I found out about the potatoes and got on the fast track. <laughs> nice. How long had you been like a junk food vegan before you switched to a whole food vegan? Well, he eats what I, I'll answer this one because he eats pretty much what I've fixed. Um, I just like food. And so, but I'm an ethical vegan and, and not, not, not one of these people who goes to the huge extremes, but what I eat, when I say vegan, I'm talking about what I eat. Um, and I was ethically avoiding meat and cheese because of the horrors of the industry. I've seen some of the videos and I'll, I will never ever eat animals or cheese because of what I've seen. So of course, as a foodie, I was trying to replicate my favorite foods. And so I would get impossible burgers and uh, silk ice cream and uh, cashew. I learned how to make a killer, literally, <laughs> literally a killer Alfredo sauce made mm -hmm. of hot cashews. It had cashews in it, nutritional yeast and wonderful flavors. It was so yummy that I would get up in the middle of the night on crutches and make it <laughs> if oh I was craving it. Is, that's how good it was on noodles but you know it's not good for your heart and my numbers are getting worse and before I did this as a matter of fact my cholesterol was slowly getting worse uh, my blood pressure was going up and up and sometimes it was horribly scary high like 190 over you know 100 kind of thing um, and what else I had high cholesterol oh my sugar was going up and I was pre-diabetic yeah so yeah both of us like, had had retinal tearing. Yeah. And so things were starting, the hubcaps were coming off is what it was suddenly. And um, that's what I said. I felt like a little old lady ball, a uh, lady bug, bug. Yeah, curling in on myself. That's what I was trying to express. Things are, I can feel myself shutting down. And I have a friend actually who is in terrible shape and has basically shut down at, you know, younger than me. Um, there are people who just can't eat this kind of food, this heavy food, without having their bodies just fall apart. And uh, some people our age have heart attacks. They they become obese, and the, you know they have 15 pills a day, and just everything starts failing. Neighbors just had a triple bypass. Yeah, and they live on junk food. Yeah. What have your friends and family said about your transformations? Well, um, everybody is, is pretty positive about it. They, they're they interested until you tell them what you do and what you eat, and then they don't really want to hear much more. They oh, isn't that nice? And they just, you know, they just don't want to hear it. It's the weirdest thing. But yeah, everybody's pretty supportive, I'd say. Do you have kids, and did they change their way of eating at all after they saw your success? Oh, that's a good question. He um, does not have children, uh, but I had two. And um, my one son was killed uh, um, was a few years ago. Thin. He was naturally thin, like he said. The other one, uh, my daughter, is like me genetically. And she and I have been dieting and counting calories since, since she became 13 and started to become aware of her body and wanting to look you know, attractive and not be overweight and battling weight. So she knows that she is now this way. In fact, she got me interested in vegan food back when she was in high school. So we're toward the end, no, early college. And um, yeah, so she's been interested in the ethical angle of it since then. And when I found out about this potato, she thought I was crazy too. Everybody thinks you're crazy. And, um, but then she saw that I lost weight. And so she eventually came along too. And she's one of Andrew Taylor's uh, groupies. I think she's in his group like I was. And I still am in his group. He has a wonderful support group. One thing yeah. brought me along was uh, the results. Uh, say what you want. The results are the proof. 
proof in the pudding. Yeah, literally proof in the pudding. You know, Chuck, Chuck, Wendy had mentioned that she had been a dieter for 50 years. Had you ever struggled with weight or tried dieting before you I've came to this around, meeting? Yeah, around 20, 2009, 2010, I went through the Atkins thing and lost about 40 pounds. Uh, it was very difficult for me, but I did lose a lot of weight and all my clothes uh, got very big and enjoyed that. But then uh, just shortly after, I just put the weight back on. It wasn't a real change in life. It was just a temporary you know, bounce. Yeah, but you then, had struggled with weight before 2009, right? Yeah, it goes yeah. back to early 1990s. You know, mm. I, I kind of blew up in the 90s and struggled with it ever since. A lot of it, I think, was from the drinking. Drinking uh -huh. meeting. But he was a bachelor too, so you know yeah. he can imagine what he wouldn't ate. hurt anybody but me. Buffalo wings was the, his favorite meal. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so you didn't get any resistance from Chuck, you know, when when you wanted to eat this way, you just made the food, and you know, because a lot of people say there, my husband won't yeah. eat this way, my kids won't eat this way. Well, I learned from you actually that if your loved one, I, in fact, that scared me. I didn't want to do this for a while because I didn't know how to navigate. I knew he wouldn't want to eat this way and eat all this weird food. And so um, I, I really wrestled with that. But I learned from you on some show that you had that if your loved ones love you, that they you can talk to them honestly and frankly say, I need this for me. I need to do this. I need to eat mm -hmm. this way. How are we going to solve this? How are we going to work with this? And that's what I did. I talked to him and asked him and he went out and bought me an air fryer that day because I imagined I would be eating air fried potatoes from now on. <laughs> and um, and I started eating that way and he just ate his things. And sometimes he would eat a little of my potatoes or whatever with me. And we just kind of went our separate ways as far as he, whatever I cooked, he would eat. Uh, but he then, in addition, would eat the granola bars and the peanut butter and the bags of peanuts and mm -hmm. the beer and mm -hmm. all that. Uh, yeah. yeah so so it didn't help him any because I wasn't eating those things he would eat what I ate plus the other stuff is a thing so. well alcohol has calories people don't realize <laughs> it can really yeah. pack on the pounds so when did you start the supper club how did you start the supper club what is the supper club well, the first thing was the first thing I started was the group W Vegan, which I started in order to um, explain how I lost weight. But people that ask me, I couldn't tell them in one sentence or two sentences. So I started a group so I could say, well, if you'd like to see what all I did and how I did it, go to this group on Facebook and you can read my testimonies and things. And so that's how I started the group. Um, uh, and then well, it was more than that, too. I, I had left a group here in, in town that had helped start that was a um, Kanawha Valley Vegan Potlucks was the first vegan group here in Charleston. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. And so um, I had to leave that because they were eating a lot of food that I couldn't eat. And I realized I needed a group, especially for a fellowship for people who are interested in learning how to eat this way, whole food, plant based, no oil. And so I started this group and um let's see the supper club came along later i'd always was interested in having a potluck because i like i'm a foodie and i like food that's fancy and tastes good it's pretty i don't like cooking it particularly but i like eating it and so um and it's a lot of work to make food sometimes so i wanted other people who were interested in something similar so i started this group and the problem was we didn't have anywhere to eat so even though we had a group we didn't really, um, there weren't enough of us and we weren't really doing anything for a while. And then one of them, Linda Hankins, she said, well, you can have one at our house. And so she held the first two. And so we invited our little handful of people. It's now grown to be like 77 people who are local. But at the time we had something like 10 or 12 members in our potluck group, the supper club. And some of them, would come and we would get together at Linda's house and we ate, she put out a wonderful spread. And, and that's where you get to show off the supper club is great because mm -hmm. for foodies meet like me, it's where you have kind of a challenge and it's an opportunity to try a fancy recipe. You wouldn't just do for yourself and your husband, especially since he's, he's not all interested in food too much. So 
um, that's what the, the supper club meant for me. It gave me an opportunity to try carrot hot dogs or maybe some different soup that I saw. Your friend Shada has a lot of food that I have tried. I've uh, tried her, her different recipes, um, falafels and different things. And so you, at Supper Club, you have an opportunity to bring beautiful food and, and encourage other people also to make beautiful food, which is we can share socially. And that's the other angle about Supper Club. This next Supper Club we're getting ready to have is called Thanksgiving Practice Potluck. We have it every year. And the point is to arm people with beautiful food that they can bring to their families, to their uh, social events. So they don't feel like they're in the corner eating lettuce <laughs> and everybody's looking pityingly at them. Oh, you poor thing, you're on your diet. Meanwhile, we get to live a wonderful life. No, we live wonderfully li wonderful lives and we eat beautiful food. And so our potluck at Thanksgiving is how to make gravy that's lovely and stuffing, which is luscious. And, and this year I'm working on a, a center roast, uh, hopefully a brand new one with wrapped in Yuba, which is a kind of a tofu skin, which will be like turkey skin. So I'm real excited about that. And a friend, a friend from Tasmania showed me a really good you know, stuffing for the in, in side of it. So anyway, and we have cranberries. We have uh, we have um, cranberry uh, like a chutney instead of the the can of stuff which I always had as a kid. <laughs> and we have beautiful pies. Uh, my pies so far have been sugar free. I've been able to find sweet enough Hannah style yams that that's sweet enough. So uh, and the challenge is to make these foods with as many whole ingredients as possible, like the filling of your sweet potato pies, sweet potato <laughs> with a few mm -hmm. cinnamon and a few little things. And, um, you know, you just make it pretty and put some lovely fruit on top, baked apples on top and different things like that. So, and, and the thing is now after practicing and having a few really good recipes, when we go to Thanksgiving, we can show up loud and proud, <laughs> you know, we can come right and we can just swoop right in with a whole plate of beautiful food. And nobody is like feeling sorry for us anymore. Yeah, that's great. So I put the information in the show notes to join your Facebook group. It's a private group. So they have to request to join and answer a few questions. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's great. And there's a, th there should be somewhere in there linked to both of them. You have, it's preferable to be a member of the main group, W Vegan, before you join Supper Club, because of course, if you're not in local, then you can't be in the supper club. So right. I always have yeah, to I, I put the, I put the main one. Yeah. You know, there's a couple of viewers like Kimberly wanting to know if you guys can talk about what you eat in a typical day, and do you guys exercise? Uh, I don't give my typical day. It's just it's pretty repetitive for me, but I enjoy just a, a bowl of uh, oatmeal with uh, a fruit in the morning, and lunch is. For me, is like usually some air fried potatoes that are covered in lots and lots of spices, hot sauces, ketchup, pepperoni, spice, uh, stuff like that, and a banana for dessert. And I, I've actually been skipping dinner, but eating later at night on the snacks and things. Yeah. Watch movies yeah. and then her treat loaf. We eat a lot of that. Yeah. And yeah, you're so going to be do doing it. a demonstration of treat love to, for you guys just at the stake with us to the end, because we have a 15 minute mm -hmm. cooking demonstration of some of their favorite recipes. Yeah. And our uh, sort of a pleasure trap now is we enjoy these popsicles that Wendy's makes. Uh, blueberries. <laughs> well, they're, <laughs> they're good. They're, they're only blueberry with um, a chunk of ginger. Mm -hmm. It's just frozen blueberries, chunk of ginger, a little bit of banana and a tiny bit of frozen apple juice concentrate to sweeten it just a so bit, you know, not my, much. My sugar fix from fruit. Yeah, that's true. We don't have and the fruit compotes in the little video too. That's when I'm craving sweets, I can just go grab a bunch of fruit compote. It's mm -hmm. only fruit, that's all it is. That's amazing. And, and Wendy, do you think this we've been able to do this without Chuck's support? She's done it with my opposition, actually. So oh, well, that's I, good. I, I try to I try to give her a lot of you know room to do to, to be to do what she wants. And yes, he's not. He's never uh, been oppressive about the food, even if I eat differently. Yeah, but I've had to come along kicking and screaming. 
like I say, you don't see many obese 80 year olds. So no, you know, I used intellectually, to I know it's good, but the little child inside is, <laughs> yeah. you know, I used to be a, is... an activity director in a retirement home. And like you say, I, nobody that was in their nineties or hundreds even was overweight, mm -hmm. you know? So good point. Really good point. What about exercise? And also Wendy, we need to know what your daily eating looks like. Oh, okay. Um, I, in the morning, I'm a little bit worried about iodine because um, we have, I realized after some reading and, and all this stuff that we have had no source of iodine in the last 12 years, at, at least for me, because um, I was using fancier salts and I was using uh, liquid aminos and all that for my salty flavorings. And so um, I tested low on iodine. And so uh, I've been eating seaweed. Now the problem with seaweed in the morning I eat it in the morning. The problem with adding it to your regular foods is I'm also trying to eat lots of raw crucifers at lunch um, because of Dr. Goldner and a lot of good things that happen with that. And I won't go into all that, but they are a goitrogen, which means they inhibit iodine intake. And lots of foods are surprisingly. Flax is too, flaxseed. So I have seaweed in the morning with a, a half a cup of my fruit compote because it tastes good in there and that's something I can manage. And then that keep, that gets the iodine in long before any goitrogens the rest of the day. So then at lunch, I have potatoes, about 10, 12 ounces of potatoes. Um, I try to have eight to 10 ounces of some sort of raw crucifer. And then I usually have a dip that I put it in. I share all these recipes in the group. Um, and then uh, I'll have... Uh, odds and ends leftovers if, if there are any and then we don't eat dinner much just sort of turned out that way and then at night at tv time we usually have um a new thing which is i call it um our medicine but it's it's lovely it's delicious mm -hmm. it's nice cream cherry pie nice cream i call it and i learned it from another group and it is basically a, a four tablespoons of ground flax seed um, and then the cherry pie or the cherry, the ice cream part is made of cherries and bananas and mint. I grow a lot of mint and it's delicious. Uh, I mean, it's just delicious. It's as good as anything. So we eat that and we have some popsicles and get in about speaking of iodine, uh, my thyroid medication was cut by about a third after losing the weight and the general giving up alcohol and improvement in metabolism. So that the need for that medication dropped a lot. You know, that's interesting that you say that because I've been on thyroid, hypothyroid for medicine for, mm -hmm. gosh, well, at least 10 years. And I just got back yeah. from the True North Health Center where I was for a couple of weeks and I did my first water fast and it's cut in half now. Yep. Wow. Yeah, that's I didn't think that was the water fast. I didn't think that was possible. I wasn't even there for necessarily that reason, but yeah, it's amazing. Just a short fast and I was able to cut my thyroid in half. So that's pretty good. Wow. Wow. Hey. Yeah. So what about exercise? You guys moving at all? I saw you with the lawnmower. Uh, our main exercise is we'll go out for long walks. We're, we live in a very hilly Appalachian area. So if we go out and walk, we have a lot of roads that go up and down steep, uh, steep mountains, steep hills. So we just go out, walk the dog, walking the dog exercise, which can uh, get us uh, breathing hard. So we'll get an hour in many nights. I try to so walk they, also in the morning for about 40 minutes or so with the dog. And so the dog gets two walks a day, most days. And then for me, when the weather is right, uh, gardening is huge for me. Mm -hmm. So I spend my walking time gardening, usually pushing big wheelbarrows of mulch up hills and things like that. <laughs> That's funny. That's Chuck, so you mentioned air. You mentioned air fries for lunch. Are you making them? I, I just I'm curious what your technique is, because I like to cook my potatoes first, chill them and then air fry them. I find I get more crunch that way. Oh, let's try that. So you just doing them from scratch and you said pepperoni spice. Do you mean like the one that from local spicery that I love? Yeah, that's yes. the one mm -hmm. local spicery. Yeah, that is so good on potatoes. He has one yeah. now that's a barbecue spice and a bacon spice and it tastes like barbecue mm. potato chips. It's so uh, good. 
Yeah, you, know, you, you don't have to cut back on spices. <laughs> not at all. And you don't have to even have salt. You know, you mm -hmm. be, bring up the importance of community and what you're doing with your supper club and your Facebook group and Thanksgiving. And that's the exact reason I left the desert because there was just no plant-based or vegan community. And it's so important. Yes, mm -hmm. it is. And, and yep. the fellowship is, and the other thing is too, there's another driving reason for me. Uh, when I started all this uh, social media stuff, it's not only because I'm an extrovert, but I'm a worried person. I see so many people, family and friends who are dying and we're 60 in their mm -hmm. mid 60s. And some of these people are in terrible shape and, and some of them aren't, but some of them are eating terribly and you know, it's coming around the bend. And, and uh, I'm not able to, before I was well-educated about this, I was not able to defend this way of eating and people were easily putting me in a corner and making me defensive and feel bad about this. So I wanted to be able to argue the case intelligently and with information under my belt when people try to pin me down. They can't do it now. Mm -hmm. And the, the group is wise because I'm reading something every day and I share it every day with a bullet point, maybe, or an observation. I learned this today about cholesterol or, you know, like on your show recently, I saw the one about um, about how you don't put fat with carbohydrate because yeah. it causes weight. Absolutely. Dr. Clapper you know? was at True North last week, and that's the exact lecture he gave, that if you're going to eat fat yeah. carbs, you don't put peanut sauce on your potatoes. Right. Mm -hmm. Or on your noodles. Right. I mean, how many, exactly. I used to love uh, that pad thai. You know, that's exactly what that is. So. The uh, fellowship, let's see where I was going with that, was that um, I, I like now being able to understand and quote um, data. I can find real data now, thanks to Dr. Gregor. I'm so grateful for him, too. He has real data. And, you know, fools can argue against data if they want to. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's my hope that people will actually go look at that and their eyebrows will raise up a little bit and say, hmm, well, this is a real thing. So that the group shares that, that information. And the point of the groups is we need to not be intimidated. We need to tell each other about this stuff because you can't find it out from your doctor. Your doctors don't know. The simple fact that meat eating increases your cancer risk by 15% is just uh, you know, the China study. There's just so much that is hidden and we are not going to know because there's no advertising budget to make it known. And so, built in their culture at the hospital after getting the stent put in the first breakfast I had, uh, they brought out bacon. Oh my God. Are you kidding yeah. me? Thank you, hospital. Yeah. I, I, and, just, I ate it. <laughs> that's just unbelievable. So uh, let's see, I have a comment from Sunny. She looks forward to joining your private Facebook group. She doesn't care for Facebook, but join for her health conscious community support. And Marlary wants to know, what do you guys do for fun? I'll let him mm -hmm. answer that. Uh, walk you the dog. Go ahead. Oh, you cook. Yeah, we, um, we have a date night usually. We go downtown and we have a little picnic, maybe a, a fancy tea um, while we're watching the people, beautiful people go by. Um, then we travel when we can, meaning usually we're t in the car somewhere to see family or something like that. I have a daughter in Charlotte and we have family mm -hmm. trip coming up to North Carolina. Yep, next uh, week. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so we do that. And then we, uh, that's pretty much it. You know, that's, that takes up time. We mm -hmm. have, you know, I've got to cook on the weekends mm -hmm. and other sorts of things. So. I just do a lot of the reading and intellectual pursuits. So. And I, I uh, cook. People think I love to cook, but no, I love to eat mm -hmm. and the cook. food won't cook itself. So I have learned to, the, the people, the reason people think I love to cook is because I don't moan about it. And uh, I figure he told me long ago, if you don't like it, don't do it. And he's right. That what's the point of, of grousing about chores you have to do, right? You got to learn to love them. The th fact is, I need good food and I need variety um, to stay interested. Uh, and I need to uh, eat with people and enjoy food with people. So that means mm -hmm. I have to like it. So what I do is I put on podcasts and I listen to, in fact, I learn a lot while I'm chopping potatoes. 
be good for our budget. Sure. Yeah. Using, I, using plain whole foods is great for the source. Yeah. Nice. Well, you wrote a poem about potatoes. I put it in the show notes, Ode to Potatoes. Yes, I did. I can't recite it or anything, but. Yeah, maybe I'll send that to Dr. McDougall. He's on tomorrow. That okay. Is, that oh, is, I love that man. I love him. Give him a hug. For me. <laughs> yeah, he's amazing. And he is a big fan of eating potatoes. Yes, he is. Oh, um, Jackie says, do you mind sharing your age, uh, Chuck? I'm about 64. We're at the age where you have to do a little thinking and math <laughs> to figure it out. <laughs> That's funny. That is funny. Well, you made a wonderful video because I know it's too hard to like cook and talk at the same interview that we're going to play of some of your recipes. Would you like to introduce it for us? Yes. This um, When I had the opportunity to be on the show and you asked what I like to do a recipe, um, I chose this one because it's something we eat have eaten for the last three years as a treat. I learned it from Chef Ramsey's Bravo, basically. Uh, it's sort of like something he made once for his daughter. And I learned that oat can be made into a stiff block, which you can cut, oats can be. And, and so to sweeten them, I'm using bananas and, yeah, that's it, bananas. Cinnamon. With cinnamon. And so it's a treat food. I call it treat loaf because it's a good finger food. And we can eat it as a treat when we want something cake-like. So we travel with it and all kinds of things. It's so useful. I just thought people could use it. And, then, and actually, you can slice it up very thin and dehydrate it and give it to your dog as well. Makes a good, I call that dog bark. Dog bark, that's great. Well, I'm going to play the video. And I, I, just, I just saw Chef Bravo yesterday. And what you're referring to is his French toast recipe where he uses yes. over oats and bakes it. And actually, when you leave True North, you, they give you a meal to go. And actually, we have some of that right now. I okay. can even show it. But without further ado, let me play the wonderful video that you made. And enjoy, guys. And we, if you have any questions, we'll come back right after. And I'm sure Wendy and Chuck would be happy to answer. We are getting ready to make treat loaf. Treat loaf is a staple at our house. Chuck and I have some just about every day. It's a great snack and it replaces the urge for sweets. We wanted a cakey, sweetie thing. We can have this treat loaf. Now, the wonderful thing about treat loaf is that it has only one, two, three ingredients. That's bananas, oats, uh, rolled oats, and cinnamon. I use Ceylon cinnamon because Ceylon cinnamon is not toxic if you eat a lot of cinnamon like we do. I drink a lot of cinnamon tea because I like it. It replaces my coffee. And um, so uh, Ceylon is the, the one that I use. And uh, the first thing I do with the bananas, take 16 bananas, is to, I cut them up first and then I hand mash them. And the reason I do that is because I like the lumps of oats in the treat loaf uh, it tastes better, just up just like the texture of it, rather than when I've pureed it. Put that in the sink. And the next thing is to dump the, um, oh, I like to put the cinnamon in for next, so it doesn't get powder everywhere. Now, we're going to put a half a cup of cinnamon in, and that is the same thing as eight tablespoons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is not a fussy recipe. You can put a little more or a little less than eight, you know, and uh, it works out okay. Then the next thing I'm going to do is pour the oats in. I put a whole, I like to use whole containers of everything. So dump the oats in there. And now we're going to pour water in there. And this is the batter. Now we've got everything mixed up and I'm going to divide <clears throat> the treat loaf batter in between these two uh, treat loaf pans. And the reason I'm using these two different sizes is because we have an old 60s oven and two of these larger ones won't fit in there. I need one smaller one. This larger one is a, I think it's a nine by 13. And this one is like an eight by 11. And those two fit very well in, into our oven. So now what I'm going to do is just divide the batter as evenly as I can in between these to make the, the loaf be about the same size. <laughs> this 
batter is delicious, just like this. When I make it, sometimes I get my spoon in there and it's hard to stop. It's so good. It's really good, just like this. You don't have to cook it or anything. The cooking it, though, makes it um, last for a long time. This treat loaf will last for uh, throughout the, the whole week. And it also freezes wonderfully well. So um, I'll do some of both. We'll keep some and we'll eat some. Mm -hmm. That's so good. Now the next thing we we'll do is to shape the loaf. And I've learned that uh, it's best to shape the loaf away from the sides of the pan because it makes it easier to get it out after it's done baking. It's not too hard to get it out of the glass pan after baking. You'll see lots of nice banana chunks everywhere, big, nice chunks. I've got my oven preheating over there. Mm -hmm. um, 275. That's pretty good. Bananas are that easy. Pebbles are bad to peel. Press it down, press it down. Because their skins are toxic. Press the sides in. Now we're going <clears> to <throat> put it in the oven. It's at 275. And we're going to put it on the top shelf because that way it won't burn on the bottom. In our oven, it's an old oven, it, um, it burns on the bottom if I put things too close to the burner. So the two of them fit perfectly. So is that. And the next thing is to it's going slow. set the Oddly. timer for 75 minutes. I have to set it after Might be something on her end. Mm -hmm. I'm going to set 73. 73 minutes on slow heat, yeah. low heat will keep, get it uh, solid, solidified all the way through without making it dry and chewy. If you cook it too fast and it gets crunchy on the outside, it's just too, it gets tough. So we don't want to dehydrate it too much either. So I'm going to hit that on start. And now that is going. There we go. Stop. Get them out. Get them out. Yum, yum, yum. This stuff smells heavenly too. It smells like cinnamon all throughout the house and baking. I had a friend who was a present for grandchildren would never smell lovely things when they she turned vegan. That is not the case. Now, the first thing I like to do to, uh, to be able to get this out of the loaf pan is to cut a small section off right here, uh, like this, and I'll do it on this one too. And that's actually our tax. I'll probably eat, <laughs> I'll probably eat that, or some of it anyway. And, <clears throat> and I cut it down the set and set middle like that. <clears throat> It cuts a little easier when it's cold, but I go ahead and cut it while it's warm. It's soft and kind of mushy right now. When it's been in the freezer, refrigerator, I mean, for a while, it gets hard and becomes a starch block. So it, uh, it, it takes <laughs> hard. Now, uh, let me go get a plate. Hang on, I'll be right back. This is where we had all the trouble. <laughs> Put this over here. I like to use a fork to get this up, to get the first pieces up like this. I'll put them on this plate like that. And it's, it doesn't stick all that much. It's pretty surprising. And then- Yeah, you could hold them, put them in the show. <laughs> and then the rest of it- It does for just a little bit toward the end here. A little bit earlier. The rest of it, yeah. I'll cut into yeah. eight pieces each. Um, that's easy, pretty easy to eyeball. And it makes pieces that will fit in my little freezer containers. 
uh, fairly neatly. And I'll use this spatula That's here a little tedious. to get these new ones out. <laughs> Yeah. Now that I've cut out sort of like a window to get that spatula in. And then <clears throat> I will, let me go get another container. So now we're going <clears> to <throat> pry these. Oh, I need to cut, make some good more cups here. This is where we speed it up a little bit later. Each of these 16 pieces is about 450, 480 calories. It's actually less, yeah. four, four and a quarter. Uh, mm -hmm. They are delicious. So good. Oh gosh, this stuff is so good when it's warm. I wish you could smell it. It smells great. It fills the whole house with cinnamon and baking smells. Now, the next thing we, uh, I will make to go with the treat loaf if we are serving this to uh, omnivores, people who are not used to this lifestyle, is fruit compote. And that's because the treat loaf is a little too bland for most people when they're not used to this diet. Now, uh, this compote is very sweet. It's only fruit, but it's something we always have. If I want something sweet, I can get some treat loaf. And when, when you combine uh, <laughs> treat loaf, compote, and when you combine the compote, <laughs> Treat loaf, the, the juices and the sweetness of the fruit, um, they make the treat loaf more tasty for regular people. So the recipe for compote is four pounds of sliced strawberries, four pounds of mangoes, 16 bananas. These bananas have been purchased from, the, we get the spotty brown ones from the grocery store uh, that are marked down and I will freeze them. Um, or if they don't have any of those, I get them ahead of time. And when they become spotty and brown, I put them in the freezer. We have, by the way, you might want to show that we have a, we have a, not a very pretty kitchen, but anyway, there's a spare freezer over there. So I'm able to do all these things because we have a spare freezer. And then the other thing I do is get four pounds of grapes, which uh, I usually have in the freezer. But if I don't have in the freezer, you can use fresh as well. So all I do is dump all this stuff in here and mix it all together. There you. Here's the, these are already chopped, the mangoes and the strawberries are chopped. And since I've frozen the bananas whole, I'm going to have to sort of cut them up here in this bowl, which I'll do with, which I'll do with the knife. But they are, when they're frozen like this, they're very soft and mushy, so they break up really quick. Now, let me find a little a spoon will work. They're so soft. Uh, I'll just kind of break them up right here like this until they're more in pieces like that and then stir the whole bunch together. And this usually makes about four or five eight cup freezer containers. And then we eat that, it takes us about three weeks, four weeks to eat this much. Um, Chuck has it every morning on his oatmeal. He gets a, a little scoop, a half a cup, cup, something like that. And I have it in the morning, just, a, I don't have the oatmeal, but I have the compote by itself. Um, with some uh, ground up wakami seaweed for iodine because I learned not too long ago that most Americans are low on iodine because they don't use iodized salt anymore. And I was sure enough, I was low on iodine. And I don't want hypothyroidism. So um, I'm taking this seaweed now uh, so mm -hmm. I can keep my levels up correctly. So I stir this like this. If, if feeling frisky, I will add in some mint. And because I'm showing off for you guys, I'm going to add some mint. We grow this mint, by the way. And this particular batch is from 624. We're just finishing up 62423. Um, and <laughs> that's the very last of it. We go through a bunch of them. 
month or so. I'll dump some of that in there because it adds a really nice flavor to it. And the new, here, let me go get this. Here, the whole new harvest that I made off of our bank, we have a bunch of mint. I've got this much, which I'm going to uh, peel tonight or shuck or whatever you want to call it and get it, the stems off of it. And then I put it in a bag like this. I don't blend it up or chop it. It would be less bulky, but uh, I don't want to put too much um, surface area that would degrade the essential oil. So the more whole I can keep it, the better. So I dry it in the back room and then put it in a bag like this and store it away in a closet. This particular batch was harvested one month ago in July. And uh, it's in this bag here. Now, normally I don't put it in the compote. We have it every night in nice cream. We have a cherry pie, it's called cherry pie nice cream. It is um, only cherries, bananas, and mint, all ground up in a little mini processor. And we put that on top of some dampened flax seed with whole flax seed, which I grind up. And I put a little bit of potassium chloride in there because I'm avoiding salt. But the potassium chloride gives it a little bit of a salty kick. And that makes the flax seed taste like pie crust. It's delicious. We love it every <laughs> night we have some. So um, if you want that recipe, go to W Vegan and ask for the cherry pie and ice cream recipe, and we will give it to you. We share all of our recipes there in the group, including how to make this and the treat loaf and so many other things. When uh, mm -hmm. you slice it really thin, you can finish up so. and put That's it in it. the refrigerator here for you know, a month or so. It, it gets really dry and hard, and it makes a wonderful uh, dog treat. We carry these in the dog pouch when we take dog walks, and I can break off little pieces. <laughs> and when we call Marty to come, we can do this as a treat. He likes these a lot. So I call this, when I do it this way, dehydrated, I call it dog bark. All right. That was fabulous. How long does the compote keep in the refrigerator? Well, um, let's see, it makes about four to five of those eight uh, cup tubs. So four of those go in the freezer and one stays out. And we usually eat it up before about five days, about five days for eight cups, I would guess, unless I'm feeling cranky and I need sweets or something, <laughs> I might eat it down even faster. <clears throat> but they will last, I think, a week, you know, just without being frozen. That is great. Well, thank you. The dog bark looks wonderful. You can maybe get a business selling dog treats. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> That's neat. Well, guys, thank you so much. This was a wonderful uh, presentation. It was great getting to know you. And uh, thank you so much for your passion and trying to help other people get healthy and start their own community like you did. Well, thank you for having me. I'm really thrilled. I feel like I'm, I'm famous now. <laughs> I'm going to be a famous rock star here. Uh, well, hopefully many more people will see this videos. And I'm going to actually give you a copy of it. So if you want to put it on your YouTube page, if you have one or in your Facebook, yes. you, can, you can do anything you want with it. So it's just it just shows that you guys are in your 60s. You made some dramatic changes and it's never too late. No, it isn't. I want to work till I'm 70. And... Well, you're on the way there. So, and it, yeah, that, that, that car accident though, boy, that, I don't know. You shouldn't have been praying for that. That's what people are know. You know, I think that's your fault. Well, <laughs> well it worked. Crazy. That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Be careful what you wish for. Right. Well, thanks. That's so right. Okay. Well, thanks. And I'll be getting you that email in a second about your two right. free samples of California balsamic. So yeah. You know, one thing I noticed you guys aren't eating a lot of vegetables, are you? I'm trying to eat some. He doesn't, but I try to eat the, uh, at lunch, I have the 10 ounces of um, the raw cruciferses, and I usually have a green smoothie as well in there. Great. I'm not All a right. fan of salads, and it annoys me to have to chop them, so. Okay. Quite a bit of, quite a bit of spinach. That's good. Well, maybe when you get these California balsamics, you'll change your mind and, and find interesting ways to use them. Mm. Yep. 
All right. right. Well, thanks, Wendy and Chuck. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back in about 24 hours at 10 a.m. tomorrow Pacific time. We have McDougal Monday. It's the first Monday of the month. So we have Dr. John.